I'm here. I hope, oh, you would not believe what's going on with the technology with me. I got, I fixed all the Wi-Fi problems. I've spent hours and hours trying to do this. And this time around, the uh, streaming software that I use uh, to switch between cameras just would not pick up my cameras. And it's done it for years without any problem. And then this time, nothing. But anyway, that's aside, I'm here and I'm going to show you step by step from start to finish how to make my little monkey card. So I'm just going to get on with it and <laughs> stop talking uh, so that we can catch up on where we're supposed to be. So this one here is my card. So this is the little monkey card and it's using the little monkey stamp and punch bundle. So this is the stamp set. It's little monkey, it is so cute. Hi Judith, thank you for being with me here. And this is the monkey punch. And so we're gonna use this. Uh, so I'll pop that out so it doesn't reflect. So this is the monkey that the punch works with. So we're gonna be working with this one. And we're gonna make two little monkeys uh, so one of them in the tree running away with a banana uh, and I designed this one for the shoebox swap day that I had with my team um, that was my first step that I had in mind I also designed it for my upcoming um, card buffet so it'll be one of the choices that you can make if you come along to the card buffet and the link to that is uh, in the description of this video uh, so if you want to come along that's the end of May um, lost track of the dates but the Thursday Friday and Saturday Thursday night, Friday morning, Saturday afternoon, um, at the end of May. So I think it's the 25th, 26th and 27th or, or thereabouts. So you can choose to make this one. But the idea behind it when I was making it is that there's no fussy cutting. Uh, we're not cutting out the monkey images. We're using the punch to do that. And there's actually no fussy colouring either, which is using the watercolour painters or uh, watercolour pencils or even the, any of the markers to do the colouring. So I'm going to take you through and I'm going to show you how it was that I did that. So if I pop that one there, you can see the finished thing. So we've got a crumb cake card base. We're just gonna fold that in half and then make a nice fold. So that's our card base that we're gonna need. We're also going to have a large piece of uh, basic white cardstock. So for, this, for the inside of this one, this is nine by 13.3. So this one is going to go on the inside of the card. And then I've also got a smaller piece of basic white cardstock that we're going to cut out with the decal rectangles die to do that. So I will just do that now. So excuse, this doesn't look so great on camera to just pop my machine in place. But we're going to use the decal rectangles dies, which are these ones here. It's a whole lot of layering dies. And I've popped the ones I need on the back just to things easier so we're going to do the smaller one on the white cardstock I'm just going to pop that in place in fact I've had a thought I'm going to cut it afterwards and I'll tell you why in a moment and I didn't do this with my team and they'll be cross with me but I, uh, <laughs> I'm going to do it later but for right now I will cut out uh, the early espresso one that we need as the background so while we've got it here I'll cut it out and all right, just get that through. So I had things in the way I couldn't turn the handle. So we'll pop that through. So let's just cut that decal rectangle that didn't need to be in any particular place. So that's the background piece. So I'll pop this out of the way just for now, and I'll come back to it to cut out later. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with this without it being cut out and I will explain in a moment what I'm going to do with that. So I want to stamp across because it takes up almost all of the shape that we're going to be cutting out we can kind of work with it as though it's the whole piece. So I'm going to stamp in early espresso I'm going to stamp my little branch across the top So kind of up there and just make sure that I've got both bits of the, the leaves in the center so that when I cut it out that I can keep both of those bits in. So I have, the, I'm going to need that in. And then I have these leaves down here. So these I'm just going to stamp across little bit by little bit. Really having them close to each other but not quite overlapping. So some of them are going to be hidden by the, uh, the monkey, so it doesn't matter too much, but just 
going across and doing some bits like that. And while I've got this out, I'm going to go across and do the inside piece as well. You remember that's that one there. So we're going to do the same kind of thing across these. Now these ones aren't hidden by anything, so you might want to be a little bit more careful with not overlapping these ones. So you can just have a little play, change them around a bit. So I've got that one ready to go as well. And then the other thing that I'm going to stamp in here is the greeting little monkey. So I'll just grab that one and stamp that in. In there, so it's a bit of room for the monkey to sit. And so I've got a little monkey in there. So that I'm now going to put aside just for a little bit, uh, so that to make sure it's dry, it dries really quickly. But just going to give it that little bit of time before I start coloring. And while I do that, I'm going to stamp my monkeys. So we have two of the monkeys that we're going to put. So it's always a good idea to check your punch and to check which way in they go. So it's going to go in this way. So I'm going to stamp my monkeys closer down to this edge. And check how much room you need for the extra parts of the punch that might cut out other things. So just put a little bit of space between so that I can make sure. In fact, I'm not going to put that away yet. I'm going to punch my monkeys out. So you use the punch upside down. So when you've got one of these punches, it has a little lock on. So you just unlock it. And then holding it upside down, you can see where the monkey's supposed to go. In that. And then you can squeeze it with both hands. So it's kind of like tongs. If you hold it like this and give it a little squeeze, it's in there. It's not moving. And I'm just I'm barely touching it. And so when I pull it out, I haven't done anything with the punch. So what happens with doing that is I can line it up where I want it to go, just lightly touching it, and then I can use both hands to punch the whole monkey out. So now I have my two monkeys. But I want to have them with, with different coloured faces. I'm going to give them crumb cake faces. So this actual, this colour here is the new pecan pie. So it's a brand new colour. Um, and I've been having fun playing with the new colours. So I'm using the same monkey stamp. And this time around, I'm just paying attention to punching, to stamping his little face. So I've got a strip here so that it can go in from the side and I can punch out the face that I want to put in there. So I've got one face. Now I'm going to do the, the second one. I might do it the other way so I've got something to hold on to. So I'll just put his face there. And then I can punch out. Hi Kathy, thank you for joining me. So I'm going to, can you see what I'm doing there? I'm going to punch out his face as well. So I've got two faces. I've got all these extra bits. I'll just clear out of the way. But I've also cut myself an extra little strip. In fact, put that away for now. An extra little strip of crumb cake cardstock. And that's so I can just punch out some of those ear shapes. So I'm just popping it in slightly in the corner and getting those ears. So I've got one there. And one for that one. And I'm going to put the adhesive on those separately, but one thing I wanted to show you as well is that you can actually put the adhesive on the cardstock in advance. So if I want to, if I put my adhesive on the back there, and if I go in and I punch out my little shape, it's actually got adhesive on already. So I can put it straight down and it saves me the trouble. But it doesn't do anything to the punch. I've, I've done it quite a few times and it's never cause any harm to the punch. It does mean you keep it, if you keep it holding it closed so that it's right at the top at the moment, then you can pop it out and then you can just put it in place on the monkey like that. So I like to use my take your pick tool to move these kind of little shapes around to get them in the right spot. And that's what I'd also use to do the adhesives on the ones that I didn't do in advance. So I've got a little bit there to do the face. 
And so this monkey, you can actually change the look of the monkey just ever so slightly by the position of the face. Because you've got this extra outline around the punch shape, oh, that's stringy bits, so better be careful there. Because of this extra outline around that punched face, I can actually use that to angle it a little bit and still cover the stamped face that's there underneath. But I can just ever so slightly play around so it kind of looks like he's looking up. So I don't know how well you can see that. There's the monkey with it as normal. And there he is just looking up slightly if I hold them closer to the camera. And you can see a little bit more. Just, just gives them a little bit of variation. And so now I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to grab my silicon craft sheet for doing this bit. And I'm just going to put my monkey ears down and make sure I've got some adhesive. And I'm going to run adhesive onto that just over the top. But then you can use take your pick tool to turn it around. Which way? That's the way it goes. To put in position. So it's a little bit trickier. If you've got the adhesive running, an extra blob of adhesive on there. If you've got the adhesive running smoothly enough, then you'll be able to do what you need to. And then I'm using the adhesive that's on the, the cardstock to stick it to my tool. If I didn't have any adhesive there, I'd be using the other end with the putty on. So I've got my two little monkeys ready to go. Now I need the banana. So I've got some Daffodil Delight cardstock here for the banana. So we're just going to stamp that again. We're stamping all of this in early espresso. Just get all the pieces ready. Uh, so you just stamp that one. And I think I'm done with my stamping now. So I'll close that up. So again, you're just popping it in the punch. So you put it in there. Give it a little squeeze and then we've got the banana and all those extra bits as well. So just move those out of the way and then you can put a little bit of adhesive on the banana to just let the monkey hold it. Just give it to his hand like that. So I've got my two monkeys, I've got my inside panel and I've got my front panel. So my monkeys are going to sit on here pretty much like that. So I'm just going to add that colour now. So that's done using the blending brushes. So I just give myself some space and I'm going to start with crumb cake. So it's a really light touch with these. The crumb cake is just along the branch and it's a tiny, tiny bit just to add a little bit of colour there so that it doesn't look like I forgot it. So I'm just using the small blending brushes. Uh, so these ones are much easier to be precise with what you want. So just adding some ink and then just kind of testing how much is there and then start from off your page. So always start in your scrap paper and then just add a little bit of colour going in where the branch is. So I'm not stressed that it's going out of the line, but it's just adding that little bit of colour and letting it blur just a little bit. So then I'm going to add my greenery. So with, for that one, I'm using Parakeet Party. It's a nice bright green. And we're going to just do a little bit of colour. Now I'm going to start down at the bottom here. So try to avoid places where you put um, colour on your scrap paper as well because you can drag some of that through. So start off and then just add the colour to where the leaves are. Start off and get the darkest bit of the colour and then start going all the way up to where the leaves are. Then you can do as much or as little as you want. You can keep it subtle or you can keep adding colour for extra depth to it. So now again I'm, I'm re-inking with the brush but I want to get the worst of it off there and then just doing a little bit where these leaves are. So it's not taking it straight from here onto my project because that can leave it uh, making little blobs that I don't want to have there. So a little bit of a delicate touch with this one because you don't want to um, get too much ink on those places. So while I've got this one out I'm going to do my inside panel as well. So just inking that up. Oh, my monkey's got in the way. I didn't realize he was down there. And then just adding that color 
So this is going to stand alone because there isn't going to be a distraction. So this is background and foreground if you like. So uh, it's a little bit more important that you get this one right because this one is going to fade away behind the monkeys and things. So just adding that the amount of colour that you want in the places that you want it. Uh, like I said, as much or as little as you want. So that one's going to go on the inside. So that's all I need for my green. So now I'm going to add some of the sky. So th for this one I'm using the pool party ink and I'm just going to fill in the places that the sky will be. So fill in the white spaces basically uh, on this one. So again, move over so that you're not picking up colour from something else and just add in a little bit of colour. And now this is why I decided that I would colour it, but cut it after I coloured it. And I will show you in just a moment. So you don't have to, you don't have to do a lot. So we're just adding in, filling in the spaces. Just keep your brush moving all the time. So always start off on your scrap paper and then just keep your brush moving. And so I kind of like that the colour isn't even and it's in a few different kind of halo areas around the shapes. And so it's a background, so you won't see a lot of that. So that's as much as I need on there. And that's all the colouring I'm going to do. So punching out, colouring with the blending brushes makes it much quicker and easier. Now what you can see here is I've got some darker marks on the edges. So even when I start off my page and then move on to it, sometimes those darker edges can come in. And that's why I decided, I need to find my, the right die now. This is the wrong die, this is the big one. Here we go. That's why I decided that I would cut it later. Because even though I've tried to not get those big dark blobs on there by starting off, you do sometimes get a couple of them. And I managed not to on this one here when I was doing it, which is great. But if I did, then now if I cut it down, then those very, very edge parts are cut away. So I will just pop these aside a bit so that they don't get squished. Bring in my stamp and cut and emboss machine. And I'm just going to show you how I put that together. So if I put my piece down there, hopefully you can see that. And I'm going to put this one down. So check where the cutting part of your die is. So this one's fairly close to the inner edge. So I know I've got a little bit of wiggle room on the outer edge looking at this. So I can come down a fair way with that one and then just cut it from there. Put my plate on top and it, ooh, that's not going to help. So I'm going to put it back in position. Move the punch out of the way, which is what's going to stop me from turning the handle that you can't see. Um, and now I'll come back and actually go ahead with that. All right. Apologies for my hand in shot. I've just got to roll that through. All right. So now. I have my finished pieces. So, oh, I didn't turn off my phone, uh, sound off my phone, but that's okay. Uh, so now I have this piece. So you can see the worst of the bits where I got that blob of ink on the edges here and here has now been cut away. And all I'm left with is the bit that doesn't have that. So sorry to my team ladies who made this with me last week. Uh, I, I realized that you do still have room to do that and you have that option to clear some space that way. So I'm going to stick this one down directly with the seal on, on the mat. So it's just uh, the layering dies and, and this is the next one up. So I'm going to put that on there. Now after this, I'm a dimensionals fan, so after this I'm going to be using dimensionals after dimensionals after dimensionals. So it's on here. And I've got my monkey down here. And then one up there. So you can play around with where you want them to go, how you want to angle them, so you can change the look by how you angle them as well. And I'm just going to add some dimensionals behind my monkeys. They don't need a lot. 
that will hold him in place. So I want him just off the bottom edge of my, so I'll put this one back in, off the bottom edge of my cardstock, sorry, stuck to, uh, of my panel, just so that it gives it that little bit more shape. If it goes up there, apart from not being able to see the greeting, um, it looks a little less finished. Um, and actually I'm going to keep taking them up a little bit. Oh, I've moved. Moved in there. And then this one. So he goes up in the tree, and he's kind of on an angle too, and he's overhanging the edge as well, just a little bit more. And then dimensionals on all of this. So I know I've got a couple of people watching. Does anyone have any questions on what I'm doing? This is a quite a fun card to make. And none of the steps are tricky, which is good. So then you can put this at an angle, you can put it straight, you can do it how you want. I do have a preference for an angle, so I'm going to do that angle again. And then I just need to put the piece on the inside. So I'm going to use the seal for that one. And pop this panel on the inside just like that. So it's all ready to write on. It carries the idea through from the front to the back. And I've made my little monkey card. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you can see how quick and easy it is to do. And that you'll choose it when you come along to my buffet. So thanks once again for joining me. I'm glad to have you here. I hope you've enjoyed the little monkey card. Uh, if you have any questions, even if it's uh, watching the replay, then do feel free to ask. Um, and yeah, hopefully I'll see you at my catalogue launch card buffet, which is coming up at the end of May. So thank you. Bye bye.